half and shield's kind of looking a um, little funky in this one it actually tries to get the funk roll under the leg which makes me think that backstage he watched the Rick Story fight earlier so he w watched Rick Story successfully hit it earlier uh, shields was unsuccessful but he went for it um, so you can look at my funk roll sweep video non-traditional side mount escapes um, for, he kind of always is on his back and flopping his back and being a little slop jitsu in this and Shields kind of moves forward trying to get the double. Cooper uh, controls the neck and head pushing to the ground, uppercut and gets on top, lands some big punches. This is kind of the story of this fight. Shields walks forward zombie-like. Uh, open guard stuff, uh, Ali Yanoki style at the end. Jake gets back up and each scramble Cooper looks to, to push the head down and hit big uppercuts for him, push, pushing his face into the mat. So, um, kind of like Jake was a little almost cocky, like thinking his grappling, he could just kind of whatever it with no game plan. A um, little risky against a guy with, with rocks in their hands like the Cooper family has. Round two, Jake kind of taking sloppy shots and more slop jitsu. Um, not that he's not amazing. He is. What I mean by that is that I do that sometimes, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm a black belt in both BJJ and under Gokushevic and Gene LaBelle. But sometimes I just kind of go, whatever, man. Do that a lot. But in a fight, you should probably have a little more dedicated, like, okay, in half guard, I'm going to do this. In full guard, I'm going to do this. I'm, my goal is to get back up, or my goal is to shoot Uma Plata right away, or to get a leg hook guard. Like, you should have kind of a bit of a thing. And I, I almost feel like Shields took him a little bit lightly. Like, as long as he was on the ground, even if it was side-mounted, like pulling side mount, like he didn't care, thinking his scrambling ability would see him through because it's done in a lot of fights. But I think that was a bit of a mistake. Um, Cooper uh, Cooper stands over him trying to land shots, and whenever, whenever Shields sits up or dives forward, he controls the neck and head and lands some big uppercuts and punches. Back on the feet, Cooper lands... Huge leaping in left hook, knocking Shields down. So another big leap in left hook like we saw Perry do in that other video I talked about. Clears legs and wins by TKO, ground pound, and a huge upset. Overall, guys, PFL is a very nice product. Uh, nice different differentiation from all the rest now. The production is really, really great, other than they had a little bit of audio problem this one in their third PFL. But production's really good. The point structure's really good. I believe they've had like about 50% of their fights finished, which is a high finishing percentage. So guys aren't point playing now to win rounds and win a boring ass decision. They're point playing to make sure they're getting in the finals because one million sounds like a lot of dollars to most fighters out there. Okay. Even though overall it's probably not that much if you divvied it up by everybody that are signed, 72 fighters or something like that. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a chance for guys to change their, their life, and, and, and they're going for it. So, I'm digging it. I'm digging it, guys. I'm, I'm supporting uh, the PFL right now. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of dug Bellator back in the day when they did tournaments. I'm a tournament kind of guy. I started with tournaments in the UFC. I kind of dig tournaments, or anything tournament style. I like this true sport format. I like it. You know, when the winners are the ones going. I'm not against hype and entertainment. I'm not against grabbing the mic and calling people out. And there is a time and a place for that when you're one of the top guys. What I am against is historically sometimes when people have gotten a title shots where they just lost three fights. Or they're from a lower weight class. And they're not the champion of a lower weight class. Stuff that they don't deserve. So somewhere in there, there's, there's, there's maybe a mix. But anyway, guys, holy stuff. Um, Israel Adesanya, dude, is the next man. Okay, that got overlooked probably because of DC and Stipe this weekend. Please check out my video on DC and Stipe, that whole 226 breakdown video I did. Hope you guys are liking this. Hope you thumbs it up. Hope you share it. Hope you tell people about it. Hope I get on a bigger network so I can actually show you the clips from the fights. You know, because even those people don't show the best clips in the fight. I'm like, oh, you totally missed this. Commentators, you totally missed those high elbow guillotines. There's always something. I'm like, man, you, you, come on, guys. So, you know, maybe someday I'll, uh, you know, have a big screen behind me and we'll get all that footage from the UFC, PFL, Bellator, and other events. Um, and uh, thanks for your support. So, guys, I will catch you on the flip side. Cheers.